We've already said in previous videos that in order to react, particles need to undergo successful collisions, which means they need to collide and they need to have a minimum amount of energy called the activation energy. For the first part of this video, we'll be looking at the impact of concentration and pressure on rates of reaction. If you're thinking about a solution, then you'll be using concentration, and if you're thinking about a gas, then you'll be using pressure. But both of these concepts represent the number of particles in a fixed volume. So in terms of how they impact rate and why, and what a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution might look like, everything else is exactly the same. You've already done extensive calculations involving concentration as part of the amount of substance topic where we did lots of titration. And you have already linked concentration to rates of reaction as part of the GCSE, but this was usually in a qualitative way. So we would say that as concentration increases, rate of reaction increases because the frequency of successful collisions increases. The key difference when we get to A level tends to be that we're now asked to do it in a quantitative way. So often you'll have a question like this one, which asks us to explain why at a fixed temperature, the rate of this reaction doubles when the concentration of a reactant doubles. And often people lose out on the mark because they miss the significance of that doubling. So what we need to be saying is that if the concentration doubles, that's because there are twice as many particles in the set volume and therefore the number of collisions is also going to double. In the temperature video, we looked at how the progress of a reaction might be shown on a graph like this one, and looked at how that graph would look different if you increase the temperature. We've got the same starting graph here, but how would this one look different if we doubled the concentration? Again, most people remember that the graph is going to need to be steeper, but they sometimes forget to think about where it's going to finish. If the concentration of the limiting reagent is going to double, then the amount of product made is also going to double, so the curve needs to finish at double the height. You could also be asked to link concentration or pressure to Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions. As we know, if the temperature is constant, the overall shape of the graph is not going to change, so the position of the most probable energy, so the peak of the graph, will stay in the same place. But if we lower the concentration or we lower the pressure, then the height of that peak will decrease. The shape will be the same, but the graph will be sort of scrunched down to half the height. Time to pause the video and make sure that you've understood what we've covered so far. We've already said that increasing pressure is just like increasing concentration. It's just that we'll use pressure if we're talking about gases and concentration if we're talking about solutions. So increasing the pressure will increase the rate of reaction. And the reason for that is that we have more particles per unit volume and therefore there will be a higher frequency of successful collisions. If we want to draw a curve that represents a lower concentration, then everything else about the curve needs to remain the same in terms of its shape and where its most probable energy is, but the peak of the curve needs to be lower. So it looks a little bit like this. You should know from your GCSE chemistry studies that a catalyst is a chemical that can speed up the rate of a reaction without being used up or permanently changed itself. It may be altered over the course of the reaction, but at the end you'll get back the same catalyst that you started with. The way that the catalyst works is by providing an alternative pathway which has a lower activation energy. If you're struggling to visualise this, imagine you're taking a trip over a mountain to visit a friend. Climbing the mountain takes a certain amount of energy and you can't change that. But if you took an alternative path, that might require less energy. And this is just what happens with catalysts. If you're looking at the energy profile for a chemical reaction, you should know that the activation energy can be denoted by an arrow that goes from the reactants up to the peak of the curve, what we've called the transition state. And it represents the amount of energy that's required to break the bonds. If you did the same chemical reaction but added a catalyst, the start and the end of the curve are the same. The reactants and the products have the same energy stored in their chemical bonds that they always did. But the curve in between doesn't go as high. The activation energy with a catalyst is lower. On a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, the activation energy is shown by a vertical line which touches the x-axis. Anything to the right of that line is a particle that does have sufficient energy. It does have the activation energy, and if it participates in a collision, that collision will be successful and it will react. Anything to the left of the line has insufficient energy, and even if it collides, no reaction will happen. When we add a catalyst, what we do is to change the position of this line and move it to the left. Now, anything to the right of the new green line does have sufficient energy and will react. So this newly shaded green area represents particles which, 
when there was no catalyst present, wouldn't have reacted, but now that a catalyst is present, their collisions will be successful and a reaction will happen. We used this simplistic representation in the temperature video and I want to go back to it now. I've got six particles and currently three of them have enough energy, they have the activation energy and their collisions would be successful, whereas the other three particles don't have sufficient energy. You can see here that the green particles will be able to react and the red ones wouldn't be. When we add a catalyst, we don't change the amount of energy that the particles have, what we do is lower the entry requirement. Now that the activation energy is lower because we're employing an alternative pathway, four of my particles can react rather than just three. Before we finish, here are three final questions about catalysts. You'll meet catalysts again as part of inorganic chemistry where you need to be able to discuss how transition metals act as catalysts and also in the equilibrium topic where you need to think about their impact on the position of equilibrium, i.e. they don't have one. But in terms of the rates topic, this is really all you need to know. So pause the video and write down an answer to each question. A catalyst is a chemical that can speed up the rate of reaction, but it does this without being used up or permanently chemically changed itself. It's able to do this by providing an alternative pathway that has a lower activation energy. And if we were going to draw a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, then adding a catalyst wouldn't do anything to the shape of it at all. All it does is move that defining line to the left so that the number of particles that do have the activation energy is greater. Thank you very much for watching and if you did find that a useful summary of this topic, don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-Level Chemistry videos coming soon.